Hey YouTube, PlayStation Nation here. So, as we approach not only the end of the year, but also the end of the current generation of consoles, I thought I would take a quick look back at one of the most popular genres, and that is the first person shooter, and give you my top 6 FPS games of last generation. It was just going to be top 5, but there was 2 I couldn't decide on which to leave out, and I wasn't going to go top 10 because there have been too many COD games in there. So, I've gone for 6 totally different but all really similar because they're all FPS games. We'll start out with Borderlands 2, and it's just an amazing, amazing game. Not just an amazing first-person shooter, because it's got elements of role-playing in there, adventure, but it was just so perfectly presented. If you play the first one, you knew the story, it gave you a bit of an edge, but it's open and accessible to newcomers. Uh, it's got the traditional role-playing elements of levelling up and the whole adventure side but it's just an excellent excellent shooter at it's heart you start out really weak and weedy with crap guns but as you upgrade you get bigger and better guns they say there's like 87 bazillion guns their words not mine and so far I've only found 86 999,999 bazillion but um, yeah, I'm hoping to find the last one and it's such an awesome game the graphics are fantastic and it's really like watching a car playing a cartoon really it's just amazing the voice acting in it is fantastic the downloadable content will keep you going for ages you can get the game of the year edition it's got all the content in it's real cheap it's so worth getting but what an amazing shooter it is the variety of weapons and the variety of animal uh, enemies the variety of environments it's just amazing it really is such a damn good shooter uh, Tales from the Borderlands has just been announced. That's an episodic game, kind of like Walk of the Dead, because it's by uh, Walk, sorry, The Walking Dead by Telltale Games. So I'm looking forward to that. See what that's like. I've got high hopes for Borderlands Three when that's announced for next gen consoles. Because if Borderlands Two is anything to go by, which was one of the best shooters of the generation, it should be amazing. Can't praise this game highly enough. Next up is Far Cry Three. Really didn't know what to expect from this. And it turned out to be an amazing shooter. Amazing environments. And again, you level up your guns, open up different options and attachments. You've got a variety of different enemies. It's got an amazing, amazing story. And really cool graphics. And it's such an entertaining shooter. You think it's going to be a really generic first-person shooter. But the environment in which it's played and the story which it's played out to are just fabulous. It never gets boring. And if you sidetrack from the main missions, you've got your own jungle island safari park to enjoy and that's uh, going free roam is just a game in itself the cover's kind of misleading because it doesn't even hint at how big and open world the game is how much there is to see and to do and to explore and you just you never get bored the on foot and driving sections are equally as good but the shooting mechanics are fantastic last year was the game of the bow and the bow is easily one of the best weapons in this game so many different attachments for it uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic game. It was one of my games of last year and I've still not got around to completing it. I really should because it is definitely one of the best shooters of last generation. So at number four, not just one of the best shooters of last generation, but one of the best games. Not actually finished this. I must get around to doing it. It's not the prettiest game, but it is just an amazing, amazing story. It's so compelling and captivating. And the weapons, oh man, the weapons are just fantastic. They really are such a diverse variety of different weapons in there. And that's the meat and bones of any diff any decent shooter. But I like that to an amazing story. And it's just a fantastic, fantastic experience. As I say, I've not actually finished it just yet. And I don't know if I'll get around to finishing it. Because I'm drifting towards the next gen now. But I've only got seven games for my PS4. So I am going to keep going back to... Uh, to last gen to play a few until there's a few more games out and um, Bioshock Infinite will definitely be one of those games I'm returning to I was a huge fan of Bioshock 1 and 2 but they were really similar so they've gone for a difference with this and I think calling it Bioshock Infinite rather than Bioshock 3 helped uh, differentiate it I mean, for one thing you're not underwater you're up in the sky and it's so bright and vibrant and colourful and there's people running around it's just like a living breathing city in the sky and you get to shoot everything and that's all you can really want from a game and in total contrast to Bioshock's light bright city, Killzone 3 probably one of the darkest, grittiest 
grimish shooters I've ever played, and so far I prefer this to Killzone Shadowfall. Uh, Killzone 3, what an amazing game. If you've got a decent headset, put it on, crank the volume up, and get ready for your eardrums to be burst, because it is loud with a capital L. It really is. This is louder than an Ital angry Italian wife. That's how loud it is. Uh, it's an amazing game, and the, the weapons, as soon as you like unlock some of the petrocyte stuff, oh, it's just fantastic. Even the default sidearm, the revolver, it's just amazing. It just feels so... When you got it in your hands, it just feels so powerful, and just big and meaty, and you shoot somebody, you've got the vibrate, uh, dual shock, you feel the force feedback when they get hit by the bullet or when you get hit, and uh, it's just a really, really physical, visceral game. And it's, oh, the, you, you do get the feeling that you're in a war zone because there's so much going off around you, but you play an integral part of the story, and the weapons are just amazing. Everything from oh, sniper rifles. There's only one game that has a better sniper rifle than Killzone 3, and I will come to that shortly. But the sniper rifle section in Killzone 3 is my favourite section of the game, apart from when you're in the uh, armoured mech warrior thing. And that is just, I've completed this game several times now. And I was kind of hoping that Killzone Shadowfall would continue it, but maybe that's a different story arc, canon. And maybe Killzone 4 will come along and continue the story, because I really hope it does. So, only two games left to cover now. One, define a, define a generation. One, define a genre. If any game defined the FPS genre of this generation, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Simply the best in the series. It really is. Modern Warfare 2, 3, Ghost, Black Ops, all really good. But Modern Warfare 4, just... It, it came from nowhere, and it was like, people were saying, dude, have you played this game? I'm like, no, I'm not really into it. Oh, play it, play it, you should play it. Once you play it, you're hooked. It is amazing. As far as I know, it was the first, like, introduced levelling up and kill streaks and prestiging. And all the, all the other games have tried to innovate and innovise and improve. I think this, stripped down to its basic components, is still the best one. You've only got two kill streaks, the chopper attack and the airstrike, but you don't need any more. And it's just such a damn good game. No Call of Duty or Modern Warfare game since Call of Duty 4 has improved on this. This really is the best. Now, I've not played it for a while, but I do feel like going back to it because it was such a damn good game. I remember completing the campaign in a day and thinking, oh, is that it? You know, I, th I thought there was going to be something more. Campaign-wise, it's good. That's good. I'm not saying it isn't. There's a great story, some great set pieces. Who can forget that final, final climactic battle for Soap and Captain Price on the bridge? But once you get into the multiplayer and start unlocking weapons and attachments and you're playing with your friends, it just becomes an all-out frag fest. And it is amazing. And the fact... Sorry, I'm sniffing. I've got cold. The fact that after what, six years, this is still the best Call of Duty. So up until this, Call of Duty had been kind of... Hit and miss, there was Call of Duty, Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty 3, there was, there was one called Call of Duty, Big Red 1, um, but I'm, I don't know, Call of Duty 4 though, it was just amazing, it came out of nowhere and it just, it's really defined the first person shooter for the last generation, not just first person shooter but also online gaming, like this introduced people that wouldn't play to online gaming and just brought gaming to a whole new audience and for that every single gamer out there owes Call of Duty for huge debt of gratitude. So if that defined FPS shooting for the generation, what game defined a generation? It's the Halo series and this is the best of it. Halo 4 is just so damn good. You go back to Halo 3 now and I was saying to my friend Tom last night, it just looks so old and dated. It's still a decent game but it it's, what, six, seven years old? Even Halo Reach, which only came out three years ago, looks old. Halo 4, over a year old now, looks better than some next-gen launch games. It really does. It's a fabulous, fantastic game. The story will keep you enthralled. I've not yet finished it. I, <laughs> I do apologise. I don't finish a lot of games, but I'm like playing across four consoles at the moment and finding time to have them to play them all is really hard work so I do need to set aside some time and dedicate it to playing my favourite games and actually finish them because even though I've got a PS4 on launch day I will be getting an Xbox One 
purely for Halo 5 and Forza 5, because I do love Forza. And I just, I love Halo. I really do. I love everything related to Halo. It's not just an amazing game, but it's the universe that it creates. Everybody knows what you're talking about when you're talking about Halo. And it's just to have such an impact in modern culture from a game is just amazing. And this is an amazing game. The soundtrack is fantastic. The graphics are just fabulous. The weapons, the enemies, also beautiful. The variety of weapons. As soon as you get your hands on the Promethean stuff, it's just it's fantastic. And I did mention a better sniper rifle than in, uh, than in Killzone. It's the DMR in Halo 4. When you've got the DMR, you feel like it's such a badass. Taking out knights from a mile away with a headshot. It's just... There is nothing better. I could play this game until the earth turns cold or until the sequel comes out. And you can pick it up so cheap. Now, you can pick up all these games really cheap. Uh, if you like first person shooters, you've not got any of these, pick up two or three, and you're guaranteed weeks, if not months, of enjoyment. So that's it. That's my top six shooters last generation. All similar, as in they have the same basic game mechanics walk forward, shoot stuff until it stops moving. But they're all different and diverse enough to be enjoyable in their own rights. And they're all just such damn games. And they're also service and advertisement as a way you shouldn't be slavish to just one particular console. I mean, I was always a PS3, PlayStation fanboy. And I went to Xbox. Now I'm back to PlayStation. I'll go back to Xbox. You know, I'm not a whore. I will play what I enjoy. I'm not just going to like stick to one console and be a fanboy. Play these games. Play them. Love them. Enjoy them. You'll thank me for it. So that is pretty much it. I feel kind of nostalgic now. It's the end of a generation. It's the start of a new one. If last generation fetches games as good and enjoyable and as emotional as this, just imagine what the next generation can bring. Strap yourselves in. It's going to be a fun ride. Comment, like, subscribe. Catch you later. Bye.